Hello again, after learning about records, this video uh, will teach us about creating modules in OCaml. Now, we've been using modules o o o uh, in OCaml over the, over the last videos. Uh, we, we dealt with uh, uh, functions from the module pervasives, which is open by default, but we've also dealt with things from module unix, from module st uh, string, from module str. Uh, these come uh, by default with OCaml. What we're going to do now is we're going to create our own modules. Let me give you some information about modules in general, and if the video becomes too l too long, then I'm um, maybe actually splitting it over two or three smaller videos. Let's uh, 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 continue and see how things go. Now, OCaml provides a modules provides a module system that allows programs to be partitioned even within a single file. So even a single file we can split it into multiple modules. And in modules we need to be aware of three key parts in the module system. Signatures, structures and functors. Signatures correspond to interfaces. If you uh, did Java before, I'm sure you know what interfaces are. Structures correspond to implementations. This is the important part that we'll be dealing with to create modules and then ha and then have some implementations inside them. And then functors are functions over structures. This concept may be new to you. We'll see whether we have time to cover it as well. But as I said, my main focus will be on structures and how to create them and how to have some code and implementation inside them. Now. Why do we use uh, 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 modules? Why do we create our own module modules in the first place? Why do we use the, mod the, the module system? Well, perhaps the simplest reason is that each structure has its own namespace, so name conflicts are less likely when modules are used. If you, for example, think of uh, using a list, a string, and an array, if you want to check the size of a list or, or a string or an array, then if you create everything in one place, then you, you need to be distinguishing between the names of, of the length, length of, of these three data structures. Whereas if we create a module for each data structure, then we have a function called length maybe or size inside each of them. And everyone would be working on its cor corresponding module rather than uh, confusing us and confusing the compiler. And another reason is that abstraction can be specified explicitly within a file by assigning a signature to a structure, so things become more abstract. I'm sure this will make sense when when actually we start coding and creating our own modules. Now, um, the way we do it is with the keyword module and then the keyword struct and the syntax looks like this. Module and then we give a module name. Notice that it should always, it must always be, must always start with a capital case letter. And then struct and then end inside that we have our implementation as you can see so this is what it, the this syntax looks like module m a uh, sm uh, sm uh, lowercase m but for the module name we need to always start it with a capital letter and then struct inside it we have our own implementation and then we end it now believe it or not when an OCaml source file is compiled, it becomes a module. So when we dealt with the file.ml before, when we compile it, it actually becomes a module. Now, the name of the module is the capitalized form of the file name, i.e. that file, the module will be just file, but with a capital F. So for example, if, a high, if my source file is mymodule.ml, then the module name will be mymodule with a capital M. Likewise, if it was actually, uh, for example, the one we we're using file.ml then the module name will be file with a capital F so remember that in OCaml when we compile a file it automatically becomes a module now modules can also be created explicitly within a source file so inside our source file we can actually create modules inside them so if we for example have my module.ml that's my my source file let me change it for example to file.ml and then inside it we may say module maybe foo equals struct until end yes so we create a new module maybe inside file.ml I'll show you how to do that in a minute then a module named my module which is now file dot foo will be created so if I have file.ml I create a module inside that source source file then a module will be created and um, named file dot foo okay so file itself becomes a module and if it has modules inside it 
they will also be called file dot you know module name with a capital letter enough talking let's go to our beautiful file dot ml as you can see here what I've done is uh, if you remember this file we learned about file access and then we learned about dates and stuff like that last time we learned about records but this time I've created two small modules as you can see here and the syntax is as we learned here module we give it a name so let me just put, push the on the side here so you can see it so module module 1 equals struct which is this here and then we put our implementation there and then we actually end it implementation we, have, we can have declarations or we can have functions if we want so I can ha I can do for example function let fun one receives nothing maybe equals it returns for example uh, a string done I can have all kind of all sort of logic inside here we can have calculations we can have iterations or anything and then return result or not wh whatever you want to do but we can do that save it and we will be able to access it via uh, the fully qualified module name but anyway so I have two modules here one called module 1 one called module 2 struct let name for example equals first and and then end it I close the module over there then module module 2 equals struct let name equals last and now notice that they have they have fields with the same name this is what I meant by uh, when I was ex explaining the size function for the list string or an array that these they have the same th the same th th they have the same name but because they, they are inside different modules then they will be different and they will everyone will have uh, its effect on its um, corresponding module um, and the way we access that the way we do that is so in my fun I was creating the record here so let me just comment this out to save us time and I was trying to print out stuff in there but what, what I'm doing here is I am printing the values inside these two modules now by using their fully qualified names so module one dot name module two dot name and I'm printing out these values uh, and this should print first and last or maybe we'll say um, m1 for module 1 and m2 for module 2 let me save that and then um, I was just experimenting let me clear the screen and then let me compile and then execute the file as you can see now I am actually accessing module 1 and module 2 as you can see um, and just to add a function maybe we can say in module 2 we can have a function maybe let for example fun1 or something that receive let's send it for example a variable d equals and it should return maybe d times d the uh, sort of square value of d or d to power 2 i.e. we multiply it by itself uh, it should automatically work out that d is actually um, um, an integer from the multiplication from the star and here let me try now to that was in module 2 right yes so let me try we've seen how that works so let me delete this and maybe to say value is a uh, percentage d that's for the um, integer and then module 2 dot fun what did I call it fun 1 yes fun 1 and then we pass it a value of maybe 4 and this should return 16 we put it in inside parentheses so it doesn't think that these are two different uh, variables so let me now compile run and value is 16 I hope that makes sense uh, we can declare variables or we can have functions inside and maybe you can have data structures and any kind of logic basically the contents here can be anything that can happen inside an ML source file as you can see here thank you very much indeed for watching maybe I mean I'm sure you can do this now in the top level yes this shouldn't be a problem you can declare module 1 module 2 and then access the contents using the fully qualified name ie the, uh, the module name and the dot with the dot I'm sure you can do that in your top level just to practice thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time